Hello and welcome to another one of our Brexit Explain videos. Before I start, I want to remind you about our other social media accounts. I'm sure you already know, but we have Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And while they're doing well, they're nothing on YouTube. We have big plans for the other platforms over the coming month or two, as well as updating you throughout the European parliamentary elections. You can find us across these platforms simply by searching for TLDR News. Anyway, let's get to the video. It's been a while since we last spoke about Theresa May's Brexit deal. It was originally forged at the end of 2018, and at the time we made a video about what the deal offered. For a while I assumed it might be the first video of ours to hit a million views. Then we released a video about porn, and well, you guessed it. Anyway, this deal was rejected by the House of Commons on three separate occasions, despite minor adjustments to try and get it through. Since these votes, it's gone a little quiet with the Conservatives and Labour in talks on how to get the deal through. That was until Tuesday afternoon. On Tuesday, May laid out her new Brexit deal. She's committed to bringing the deal back to Parliament for what must be the final time in the week beginning June 3rd. This will effectively be the fourth time it's been before Parliament, and in case you've forgotten, it got absolutely hammered the last three times, including the worst and third worst performance in a vote for any government ever. So May had to do something to try and give it a bit of hope this time round. After a long cabinet meeting on Tuesday morning, she gave us a speech at about 4pm, laying out 10 new alterations to the deal. So it makes sense for us to run through these one by one. Firstly, she committed to seeking alternative arrangements to solve the Northern Irish backstop issue, placing the government under a legal duty to finalise any alternative arrangements before December 2020, when the backstop would otherwise come into place. This was obviously aimed at the Brexiteer Conservative MPs, who back the so-called Malthouse Compromise. But it's worth noting that neither Northern Ireland nor the EU sounded very keen about the idea of technological solutions that alternative arrangements allude to. We've actually got a video in the pipeline on border technology, so if you'd like to see that, then give this video a like and let us know down in the comments below. She committed to keeping Northern Ireland aligned with the UK on regulations and customs if the backstop comes into play. This might assuage the DUP, who've been worried that the backstop will allow the UK to slowly diverge from Northern Ireland, eventually creating a border in the Irish Sea. She's also committed to requiring MPs' approval for any negotiating objectives and final treaties. In theory, this should give MPs more power over the direction of any future Brexit negotiations. But this seems a little empty, given that she hasn't really defined exactly what constitutes a negotiating objective or a final treaty. Fourthly, she's also promised a new bill guaranteeing that workers' rights in the UK will not lag behind those in the EU. This has been a talking point for a while now, and has actually already been promised. The idea is to have an equivalent UK law for every new EU law passed on workers' rights, which is something that Labour is especially keen on. The idea here is to try and persuade a few more Labour MPs who might be sitting on the fence to vote for her deal. She's promised something similar when it comes to environmental protections, to guarantee the UK standards don't start to lag behind EU ones, as well as a new independent watchdog to make sure that this actually happens. She's also committed to ensuring as close to frictionless trading goods with the EU as possible, while outside the single market and ending free movement. If we're being honest, she's already said that she's going to do this anyway, so this sixth promise doesn't really change anything. She's committed to matching EU regulations for goods, to limit border checks, and to ensure that just-in-time supply chains that operate throughout the UK will be able to function as usual. Again, this is a sort of a given, unless she was planning on disrupting all supply chains before this announcement on Tuesday. The eighth point is where things get slightly more interesting. If her deal passed, she promised that MPs would get the chance to decide between a temporary customs union, most likely until the next general election, or a facilitated customs arrangement. Apparently these two options were whittled down in the parliamentary meeting earlier in the day. So let's take a look at them. The first one's pretty self-explanatory. A temporary customs union would mean effectively staying in the EU's customs union, applying the same external tariffs as the EU for the limited duration of the customs union. The Facilitated Customs Arrangement, or FCA, is what May proposed way back in her original Chequers plan. 
It's a little complicated, but basically the idea would be that the UK could set its own tariffs, but that any goods coming into the UK would be labelled as either intended for the UK or the EU. If they're intended for the EU, the UK would collect the EU's tariffs on their behalf and then send the money onto the EU. Then hopefully the EU would reciprocate and do the same. This in theory prevent the need for a hard border between the UK and EU, but it's super complicated. It needs a whole load of new technology and administration to organise. It's difficult to see how it could be applied to a whole lorry load of stuff, when half of it is going to the UK and the other half to the EU. What if it doesn't end up selling in the UK? Are they then allowed to move it to the Republic of Ireland? And how else could this possibly be enforced, if not with border checks? There's also a more fundamental problem. EU law prohibits third countries from collecting tariffs on its behalf, which is why Barnier rejected this proposal outright when it was first put to the EU. But hey, who cares about that anyway? Again, this will hopefully be covered in more detail in that video about border technology I mentioned earlier. So again, if you like the sound of that video, let us know down below. So on to the ninth point, and this is a big one. She committed to a Commons vote on whether the final deal should be put to a second referendum. Essentially, MPs will get to decide who gets the final say in the deal, them or the public. If they pick the public, then the deal will be put to a public vote, essentially a second referendum. She probably hoped that this would attract MPs who are hopeful about the chance of a second referendum, and Brexiteers who think that a second referendum wouldn't go through Parliament at the moment, thus stopping the People's Vote campaign in its tracks. But in reality, it's probably going to put both groups off. Opponents of a second referendum will dislike this concession, and second referendum MPs want a guarantee of a public vote, not just the Commons having a vote on it. Finally, she's also committed to a legal duty to enshrine these changes into the political declaration that accompanies the withdrawal agreement, essentially making the first nine points legally binding. To be honest, this sort of had to happen to make these promises mean anything, so it feels like she has plonked one on the end to round it up to ten points. But, to be fair to her, 10 is definitely a much nicer number than 9. So, will this work? Will the changes make a big difference? Will they solve all of the issues that May is currently facing? Well, none of these changes are groundbreaking, to be honest. And basically, all the ones that attract Remainer or Labour MPs will probably put off Brexiteer or Conservative MPs, and vice versa. This isn't helped by the fact that basically every semi-famous Conservative MP is getting ready for the imminent leadership race, and know that they have to burnish their Brexiteer credentials if they want to stand the chance of winning a vote amongst Conservative members. And this is probably best done by voting against the deal, and dismissing it as not truly Brexit. This is probably why Boris Johnson came out against the New Deal, having actually supported the old deal and its third meaningful vote. However, there's one thing that might give Theresa May a sliver of hope. On Wednesday last week, a Labour representative refused to rule out abstaining from the withdrawal agreement six times. This is before talks actually broke down, and since then, Labour sources have implied that they'll actually be whipping against the deal. But nonetheless, if for some reason Labour decide to abstain from the vote, it could give Labour MPs enough licence to vote for the deal, and possibly end up pushing it through is not likely. In fact, it's pretty unlikely. But this is Brexit, so you never know. Anyway, those are the basics of May's amended deal. May hopes that these 10 changes, and it's kind of generous to actually call them changes, will be enough to get her deal across the line, to finally get a deal passed through the House of Commons. As we said, it's not looking great for May. Getting people with vastly contrasting opinions to agree to her deal won't be easy. And as fast as she's pleasing some people, she's upsetting others. Time will tell if this attempt will be successful, and if May can actually get this deal done. We will of course be keeping you updated with this proposal, as well as every other major Brexit vote or deal. To stay updated with this story, and everything related to Brexit, or this week's European elections, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. As I said at the top, you can also find us across our other social networks, including Twitter, Facebook, Patreon and Instagram. You can follow us in these places to get exclusive news and content by searching for TLDR News. One last thing before I go, I wanted to point out that our limited edition Germany merchandise is about to stop being listed in our merch store. We've always said that it was a limited edition and that it wouldn't be around forever. In fact, maybe we should have already deleted it. Anyway, I'm going to be kind and give you two more days. In two days time, I'll remove it from the site 
and the Germany with shoes design will be gone. We let you vote for which country you wanted to see and you pick Germany. So we'll do the same again soon and let you pick the other country's designs. Also, if you want the UK with shoes or the EU or the US or even the UK and EU together, all wearing shoes, those designs will continue to be available alongside the rest of the collection. Anyway, there's links to all of that in the description, so I'll let you explore it for yourself.